NFL preview time. Let's jump on in. Let's get down with it. The NFC West. Now, Chris, what is your feel for this division? Is this as as big of a deal as as it has been in in years past? No, no, I think no. this is going to be a down division. Uh, I think one team's really exciting. Um, kind of have a weird take on them, but um, I think the other teams are going to be okay. Yeah, I I think I agree with that. I think this division could be entertaining. I, I, I don't think, know that it's going to be good. I think those are two different things. I agree with that. Okay. So here is the rundown. Uh, this is last year's standings. How they finished. The Los Angeles Rams went 11-5 and five last year. First the, year without Jeff Fisher. Yep, yep. Uh, first year starting Jared Goff. Uh, first year with Sean McVay. Correct. Seattle Seahawks, they went 9-7 and seven last year. Coach is really good at chewing gum. You got that right. Pete Carroll, the gum chewer. The Arizona Cardinals went eight and eight last year, and Bruce Arians is no longer there. He is but, retired. Yep. Uh, how that team went eight and eight? I just when you look back at it, you're just like, man, what in the world? Uh, San Francisco 49ers went six and ten. They won what was it? The last five games of the year. Well, I know they won four in a row with um, Jimmy G. Jimmy G. So. So that is the rundown. We're going to start with the division champs from last year, the Los Angeles Rams. Like I said, 11 and 5 last year. Their over under this year is 9 and a half, but they are minus 180 to go over. So, if you want to get those guys, you're going to have to pay a premium. Faux show. Uh to win the division, they are minus 180. That's not insane odds. That ain't the Patriots like minus 830. Minus 180 really isn't that big of a deal. Like if you think the Rams are going to be good, uh and I do, just to preface this, yeah, that's not a bad price. No, nah, it's not a good bad price. price. It's year two under Sean McVay. Todd Gurley is probably going to be amazing again. The offense added wide receiver Brandon Cooks. You would think that he would be better than he was in New England, which I still hadn't figured that out. Well, I don't I mean, know he how was a, good. He was a top 20 wide receiver in yeah. New England. Oh, yeah, and I think he'll be even better in this offense. They just spread the ball. Well, I don't know. I think they did the same thing. Not that he's got any talent issues. They just spread the ball around so much. Yeah, they, they certainly do. Uh, defensive coordinator Wade Phillips, who is a top defensive coordinator in this league. Yeah, he might be the best in the league. Yeah, he's got a bunch of new toys to play with. Aaron Donald, of course, is awesome, but they added Ndamukong Sue. They added cornerbacks Saqib Tlaib and Marcus Peters, et cetera, et cetera. They look good Looks like on they're paper. trying to get the deal with Aaron Donald worked out and get him back on the field. So here's my only worry with this team. Okay. I think the new tackling rules are going to hurt teams that have players that tend to be very undisciplined. They added, and they got a lot of undisciplined They added players. three guys to this team, this defense, that care nothing for rules. Now, you're right about They're going to do what they want to do. And, I mean, you could almost say these guys are going to chalk themselves up to two or three just gimme penalties. They're all 15-yarders. I mean, you're looking at, you know. Well, and some of them, pass interference can be. Well, yeah, but well, I'm not bigger. talking about pass. I'm talking about the You're just talking about rules. the helmet I'm rule. talking, well, yeah, yeah and, and they're calling the, um, I guess it would be pass interference. They're calling the, the, the receivers uh, getting touched and grabbed a lot, a lot closer. That's the only thing that scares me about this team. This defense, in fantasy football, this defense is considered to be one of the premium two or three defenses. Yeah, because penalties don't hurt you in and fantasy. I, well, but points do. Yeah, that's true. And if and if you continue to allow teams to sustain drives and and things of that nature, I think I think it can cost them games. I think the defense is violent enough. <laughs> no, that's a good word. That's I think they are violent enough that the and the offense is going to put up points. And they they're going to put up a lot of points. Well, they they have to get the Donald deal done. Yeah, they don't have any choice. And they'll they'll get that done. I've got. Total faith I'd that love Los for them Angeles not to time. and let him walk as a free agent next year. <laughs> of course you would. <laughs> I've got uh, I've got the Rams going thirteen and three. Woo! Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm and really, I'm talking like that's that's big. That's but, big. I, you know, I got them. I'm not a whole lot off from you. I've got them twelve and four. I think they're going to be really good. I think Sean McVay's a really good coach. I think this team has a ton of talent. Offensively, yeah. defensively. Well, this is they're they're in the window, right? Yep. Like they're in the window, and they know that they don't have to pay Jared Goff for a couple more years. Go out, get a bunch of one year right. dudes, bring some veteran leadership, 
quote leadership I don't into know if the they locker room in leadership. and and then see what happens. So the the, the other, ownership thought that this was a good idea because they need more butts in the seats. Well, yeah, they're going to open up yeah. that new stadium in a year or two. I don't know when it's supposed to be ready. Uh, I think they're the clear favorite to win this division. I don't know anybody else that has a that I can actually foresee winning this division this year. Okay. Next year, maybe Seattle does some things differently. Arizona takes a big step forward. It's 49ers completely rebound. We're having a different conversation. This year, I cannot see anyone else winning this division. The only losses I have on the schedule are at San Francisco, at New Orleans, and, let's see, Kansas City at home. Uh, and that's before their first bye week, which is in, like, week 10. Now, the, the one thing that scares me is they have played zero starters in preseason. Yeah. Not not in the dress rehearsal, not in week one, not in week two. They're dang sure not going to play them in week four. Sean McVay likes to do stuff different. I know that, but I do think this. If they're going to lose games, they're going to lose the first four weeks of the season. Now, not that they're going to lose all of those games. I'll be looking to bet against them against point spreads because they're going to be a heavy favorite because the public loves them. Yeah. The first week or two until Vegas can adjust the lines and or they get up to football speed, these guys have not played. They've got at Oakland to start off with. And that's a Monday night game. Then they play Arizona at home. They play the Chargers and... They play Minnesota, and then they have three straight road games. It's at Seattle, at Denver, and then at San Francisco. My first loss for them is at San Francisco so in that I've, third road game. I, I could absolutely see them losing back-to-back -back Chargers and Minnesota games. Oh, yeah, I could see that. I, now, the problem is they're both at home. That, that, so, that, 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 and that Minnesota, me. Minnesota, yeah, look, both of them, it's a Thursday night game, yeah. and Minnesota's got to travel all the way to L.A., not a whole lot of rest between traveling, the 23rd. Traveling and, to L.A. is not a difficult thing to do. No, it's not. But it's you You got to go on the road that week. You've only got a few days after that Sunday game. I'm, eh, I'm with you. We'll see I'm what happens. You. So uh, so I've got uh, the Rams 13-3. What did you have? I'm 12-4. I mean, 12 we're, not, we're not far Yeah, off. we're not far off on that. We just got a lot of different wins. We both got them winning the division. Correct. All right. Next up, Seattle Seahawks. 9-7 and seven last year. 8 is their over-under win total. They are plus 135 to go over the eight. So not a whole lot of love from Vegas. They are plus 350 to win the division. Uh, the O-line is flimsy, but Russell Wilson has helped mask the uh, the protection issues a little bit. Uh, they may be overreached, taking San Diego State running back Rashad Penny in the first round, but they haven't had a capable running back in three years. The Legion of Boom is pretty much done. Uh, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, Michael Bennett, and defensive coordinator Chris Richard are all gone. Wilson is exciting, but he's got several terrible games in him each year. Seattle doesn't really have the talent to uh, withstand that this season, I don't, I don't believe. No, I don't either. I, I, I've got them having a down year. Um, I got them right on the number. I got them 8-8 eight and eight this year. Like, them, it's a tough schedule. I got them 6-10. and ten. Whoo! No love for Pete Carroll no. and Russell Wilson, huh? No, I, th I think this team is in – they, they are – when they are drafting running backs, they should be drafting offensive line. They could yeah. easily have the worst offensive line in football. If not, they're going to be bottom four, bottom five. I agree with that. Um, that. That's probably one of the reasons why they have a hard time finding a good running back. Maybe build your line and one of these guys turns into a good running back. If you get a great running back and put them against a garbage offensive line, they well, don't Nobody had Rashad Penny in the first round. Nobody. Like, nobody. Yeah. Like, a lot of people had him early third round, maybe? Yeah. And, and, and I mean, they're – so I've I've listened to some other guys around, and that's not to say Rashad Penny is not good. By the way, he was well, outstanding at San Diego State, but it was just a bit of but, a reach. But the knocks are are legit in the sense of how good was he at San Diego State? Because what kind of talent is he going against? What are the defenses looking like? Because yeah. I watched Nick Chubb, who went after him, just destroy the SEC for three years. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, that's the difference. Who knows? Who I knows? got him six and ten. I would love to see Russell. You know, I love Russell. I don't Wilson. think that's I'm out of the big, question. I'm a big fan of his. I think Doug Baldwin can have a big year. I don't know what's going to happen in this offense. Um, one guy I actually think could be a difference maker for them is old man Brandon Marshall. I think what Brandon Marshall is going to do yeah. is he's going to take over the tight end role. Now, he's not going to play tight end, but I bet they run him in the slot. Oh, I bet they and do I a bet, lot. I bet, I bet all he does is go up for jump balls in the red zone. Probably so. so, and he'll he'll get a lot of those. Uh, listen to this road schedule for them, by the way. At Denver, at Chicago, at Arizona, at Oakland, at Detroit, at the Rams, 
at Carolina, at San Francisco. Hey, one one team from out west, it's either one of the L.A. teams or it's uh, Seattle, is going to London. We need to figure that out. I don't um, have it on my schedule. I do I think it's a road game. I don't think it's one of their home games. Uh, I, I could be wrong on that. But You're talking about for Seattle? No, it's one of the it's one of the out west teams. I always find it really strange that the NFL picks a West Coast team to send to London. Yeah, it's every a, year. Like there are plenty East of teams. Coast is not the, that bad. But plenty of teams in the East that you can send to London. Yeah, there's a whole lot of teams. Well, the Chargers east of have the been going. Hadn't they? The Chargers have gone a couple of years. Yeah, but I, I think, think I think this year it's a different uh, it's, West Coast it's team. The Chargers this year again. Yes, because. Uh, it is the Tennessee Titans that's right. it going is the to Titans. the Chargers. That's yeah. that's just insane. How many teams does the NFL have east of the Mississippi that you could send? Uh, a a whole lot. lot. A lot. Like that's like eighty percent of the league. Well, not eighty percent, but it's a lot of the league. I mean, you need to send the Jets every year. Probably send Jacksonville every year. Send uh, Tampa Bay. You send the Giants. I mean, any send, of the you know, any of the East Coast teams. All these. Anyway, just a pet peeve of mine. Don't understand it. Arizona Cardinals went eight and eight last year. They're over under is five and a half this year. Um, they are minus one ninety to go over the five and a half, which is kind of surprising. Uh, to win the division, though, they are plus one thousand. Not great odds from Las Vegas. If you have a, a, a feeling about the Cardinals, you might want to jump on that plus one thousand. They brought in quarterback Sam Bradford. They drafted quarterback Josh Rosen, so they are looking to get that position set. Uh, wide receiver Larry Fitzgerald and running back David Johnson are stars, but that's about all they got. The offensive line is kind of flimsy. Uh, new head coach Steve Wilkes is going back to the basics on defense, uh, and there's plenty of talent there to remain a top ten defense even in a new scheme. I, I like, I like him. I think the defense is going to be good. They need to find a way to run the football. If Sam Bradford is going to start for this team, they have to run the ball. Well, and I think they're going to build this offense around David Johnson, yeah, right? Like they, they, I think they're doing that early. That seems like the most wise thing to do. Sam cannot play. And they, they've got a capable offensive games, line, much less sixteen. Yeah, they, they've got a capable offensive line. I don't know that they're at they'll be their better. Best. Than, they'll be better than average. I, I don't think they're at their best in pass protection, but they should be able to run the football. Yeah. And the better that you can run the football, if David Johnson can stay healthy this year. The better they run the football, the better their defense is going to be because the defense won't be on the field as much. Yeah, they lost Tyron Matthews. They let him go in free agency. I thought that was strange. Um, he signed a one-year deal with Texans for not a lot of money. So I, I just didn't know maybe he didn't fit um, Wilk's scheme. I, it's entirely possible. I couldn't possible. figure that out. But they've got talent on his defense. Yeah. They have, I, now, Patrick Peterson's getting old. I don't know that he's the shutdown cornerback he used to. But I think he would fit in Wilkes' scheme. Yeah. I, especially for right now because it's going to be very basic to but, start off with. But being one-on-one -on, -one on an island against the best receiver in football, that's a young man's game. And yeah. He, he's not a young man anymore. Now, you're, you're right what about do you, that. What do you got the Cardinals? I got the Cardinals 6-10. and 10. So, I got them 5-11. and 11. We're really close. We're yeah. really close. We're, we're right next to that 5.5 number. I'm very curious how long they go before they play Rosen. I, we both agreed that Rosen was the most pro-ready quarterback out of this draft, right? Well, he, he's already had, it, like, some injury issues. Nah, and he, I mean, and he always right. had yeah. injury issues at UCLA. And, but he played through them. Yeah, he, he played through some of them, but he did miss, like, half of a season. Uh, it actually last year he missed half the season, so you gotta wonder like, okay, do we do we want to secure the offensive line before we really let this kid get in there? Uh, but I think he is so headstrong that it's not gonna matter. I think he's like, a tough kid. He's he's a Peyton Manning, right? Peyton Manning went in his first season yeah. and threw like a billion interceptions. Yeah, he led, and the, it didn't led matter. the world in interceptions, and he didn't matter. He yeah. he just he needed to get some game speed. He's fearless. He's a tough kid. He's probably one of my favorite guys that came out of this draft. Um, and um, Bradford's on a – is it a one-year deal or a two-year deal? I uh, think – I don't know. I have no idea. Either way, I, know, I don't think I know they this, are – Between Bradford and Mike Glennon, they were paying like $38 million to quarterbacks. Yeah. And then they paid uh, Rosen – Well, Rosen's a rookie know, contract. Nothing. That's rookie good contract deal. ain't nothing. Um, but I, I could see – I could see like the last eight weeks of the season starting Rosen. Yeah. Because once you lose but a that's few a early – it's half, it's, it's half a season, yes. But, like, once you lose a few early, like, I've got them winning a whole lot at home early. But, you know, like, I've got them, uh, let's see, four and four after the first eight games. And then they've got a bye week before they go to Kansas City. Like, they might let Bradford start at Kansas City and then start Rosen at home against Oakland. That, like, I, I could see that happening. We'll see. Well, I'm, I'm just curious how it's going to shake out. Absolutely. All right, next up, finally, the San Francisco 49ers. 
went six and ten last year. They're over unders eight and a half. They're plus one thirty to go over the eight and a half to win the division. Though they are plus two twenty. They got the second best odds to win the division. Jimmy Garoppolo is seven and zero as a starter. Uh, I'm guessing they're probably going to take his first loss at Minnesota in Week One. Uh, year two under Kyle Shanahan should be even better chemistry, uh, even without a ton of talent there. There's just there's not a bunch. Uh, running back Jarek McKinnon, he's going to fit Kyle Shanahan's scheme perfectly. The D line has a ton of potential. Linebacker Reuben Foster could be a Pro Bowler, depending on off field crap, right? Like just quit messing around. And uh, and Richard Sherman, even an older version of him, should help that secondary. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I all, think he's better than what they had. How's all that? we've seen is Richard Sherman getting dusted in training camp and in preseason. I ain't by worried every, about that. By everybody. That's, um, I, mean, <laughs> I, I ain't that worried guy, about that at all. I think that guy's done. But the rest of this team I actually like. I, they're really exciting. I'm a Jimmy G guy. I'm a Kyle Shanahan guy. I buy in. I'm, whatever they're selling, I'm buying. I heard a really funny story today. I don't – I read a really funny story from – and it's from a New England um, blog that I follow. And um, don't know how much how true it is. I kind of hope it's true. But anyway, it, it got released that John Lynch originally, when kind of the dissension was going on in New England last year, called Bill Belichick and asked about Tom Brady. And Bill Belichick swore at him and hung the phone up on him. And then he he hey, waited. That, that takes some major cojones. And then to call he waited. About Tom Brady. And he waited about three or four hours. And he called back and asked about Jimmy G. And that's when they worked the deal out. That's pretty funny. I kind of hope that story is true. It it's one of the things that makes me love Bill. That's, and I'll tell you this: <laughs> you're right, John Lynch. I think he's going to be a really good GM. He's yeah. building something in in San Francisco that's that's pretty awesome. Uh, he's got the coach and he's got the quarterback. I I believe. I think so too. I got them nine and seven. What you got them? I got them eight and eight. Man, we're really close on yeah, the lines. We yeah. we kind of see we kind of see these teams alike. I I think Jimmy is going now. He's still through like an interception every game, and and yeah. he he still is going to turn the ball over. Well, he's, he's going still to learning make that mistakes. Offense, he's right? got seven starts ever. Do you think dating a porn star will uh, will help or hurt? Can can, can we? You can, <laughs> like we? I'm. My mom would be ashamed. I'm not going to have this conversation right now. <laughs> I can't do it. Why are you taking her to dinner for? Like, you know you don't have to buy her dinner. You got me. Is that wrong? I don't know. Is that, and and she's, like, she's 10 years older than he is. Let, let, is that wrong? Like, is that a bad thing to say? I don't well, think she, it's wrong. She does this for a living. You don't have to, like, wine her and dine her. I, I feel like maybe he's one of those dorks that, like, thinks it's cool. And it's what not a, that it's not cool. Like, it, look, they're people too. She's fine. That's right. Whatever. That's right. If you if like, you love the girl, let her do what you want. Yeah, let that's do what fine. you want to do. But Be like, happy. it didn't seem like it was that. It, it seemed was, it was kind of like a a one date kind of thing. I, I will tell you this: if you're gonna be weird, San Francisco is the best place in the world for you. You got that right. Because you can be accepted. If you're doing that in Dallas, they're gonna kind of laugh at you. Yeah, I think I think you're right about that. So, all right, that is the NFC West. 